So today we are going to do a project. This project um, is about volumes, so it concludes our, our work with volumes. Um, you are going to need scissors, a piece of cardboard or other you know, uh, workable material, uh, and some glue, or possibly tape. You could do it with tape. All right, so it's not going to be hugely taxing um, to your office supplies, um, but there are ways you can, you could, if you have more stuff available, you can, you can make it fancier. All right, so uh, here's the project. It is posted, so if it's difficult to read here, just make sure you print it out and look at it or just look at it online. Um, essentially, you're going to create a region of the plane using two functions, just like you did for the area project. Okay, at least one of the functions has to be nonlinear. Um, and then, uh, so this says using table feature of a graphing paper, uh, calculated with graph paper or using software. So I highly recommend, you know, if you can print a graph using um, Desmos, that's the best thing to do. Here's a printed graph of the functions that I'm going to use for an example. And you see I've just taped them onto the, see the tape? I just taped it onto this piece of cardboard. So now I have a piece of cardboard that has a function on it, okay? Now, but if you, I know, understand lots of people have printer issues, so uh, you can just use a uh, piece of graph paper if you have that, and then use your graphing calculator to, um, you know, use the table feature so you can just plot it point by point. Other thing you can do is just um, uh, produce the graph on your screen, put a piece of blank paper over it, and just carefully trace it with a uh, pencil while, you know, while the paper's on the screen, and then, and then try to clean it up nice um, later. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to print that thing out. Now it says using, so we're going to, you, that's your first step. Your step two says, basically says make one of these. All right, it says um, at least a significant portion of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So, you know, this this paper is eight and a half by 11. Uh, is that a significant part of it? Yeah. And uh, basically I made it this size because this is the piece of cardboard that came as packing and something that was shipped to us. So we sort of have the advantage of living in Amazon world where everybody's getting cardboard boxes all the time. It's like nonstop Christmas. Um, it, I know not everybody is in that boat, but a lot of us are just getting a lot of boxes. So here's something you can do with one of those boxes. Make this project, just cut it up, make this project. All right. So then let's see what else. Uh, so using this region as a base, we're going to construct a solid known cross section. You may use cross sections that are squares, semicircles, right triangles with either leg and the hypotenuse or equilateral triangles. Use construction paper or another medium. Oh, yeah, that's another thing you need construction paper or another medium. All right. So you can use another piece of cardboard or like, you know, like if you take a just a file folder and you just cut pieces out of it. You can use a file folder. It doesn't have to be colored. I wanted to use a nice color and I happened to have one. I didn't go to the store for any of this stuff, but you know, I'm a teacher. I have all this stuff laying around anyway. Um, hopefully you're students and you also have a lot of this stuff laying around, but if you have to, you know, just find something that you can cut up, you know, uh, or you, but you could use another medium, like you use wood or some, some people, you know, have access to other materials that you can use, you know, styrofoam, whatever. All right, so um, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to use that construction paper. You could use another medium if you wanted. We're going to create co cross sections perpendicular to the region using enough cross sections that the shape of the solid can be clearly seen. We're going to use calculus to find the solid, and that's it. All right, and basically you're going to, what's missing from this because this was created before the online world is, of course, you're going to take a picture of it, and actually I'd like a video of it so that you can show it in 3D and uh, you're gonna turn it in. All right, so let's let's take a look at this one that I made. So, in fact, I have an example that um, I printed out and then lost. Uh, yeah, I have an example somewhere. Oh, I just right here. <laughs> it was underneath there, there we go. Uh, so here's an example that I did. So I decided to use ln x plus five and e to the x. I decided I'm not gonna use any linear functions because that's how I roll, all right? And I decided that the cross sections of the solid, so this is the things you need to write. You need to say that what the region R is, you need to say what the cross sections are. I'm gonna use equilateral triangles and you're gonna see why I like equilateral triangles because they're easy to make. All right, so I'm gonna make some equilateral triangles and I'm gonna cut them out of this paper. So I think I've got enough time in this video that I can make one of the, well, maybe I'll just look through the rest of this. So um, the intersection points, uh, I deter I'm gonna say what technology I use to determine the intersection points. Maybe you used your TI calculator, whatever. All right, so I state what the intersection points are. You need to do that. And you need to label those intersection points. So on the graph, I've labeled both functions and both intersection points. 
all right? And then here's my volume calculations. I guess I'll build the shape and then go through the volume calculations. So that was what we'll do next.